G'day everyone, welcome to another Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update. Today, the 5th of January 2016, my name's Chris Nitzo. This update sponsored by a major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. One little piece of interesting uh, activity here near the Australian mainland was this little low that sort of popped up today. Uh, it has since weakened out in the last few hours, but it uh, certainly was uh, showing some interesting rotation. But look, there's too much vertical shear out there. There's too much dry air. It's not going to do too much out there. So, uh, But it was one little piece of interesting weather that was going on, at least in terms of tropical low potential. All right, the other obvious area of interest here is Tropical Cyclone Ula. Tropical Cyclone Ula is located out here to the south of Fiji. It's tracking in a westerly direction. It's uh, around about a Category 2 Tropical Cyclone at the moment and expected to weaken further to a Category 1. Now, if it weakens quickly enough and if it weakens to uh, Tropical Low, without too much structure, then the low-level circulation center could move west all the way into the Coral Sea. If it maintains its structure and maintains its intensity as a as a weak to moderate cat category 1, 2 or 3 tropical cyclone, then it's likely to encounter another upper-level trough out here around Vanuatu or uh, at or further to the south around New Caledonia and from there is expected to track in a southeast direction and hassle New Zealand or the fish. So I guess it's got two real options into the future. Alrighty, let's take a look at option one. Option one is that the system remains quite a moderate to strong system and will eventually get captured by an upper level trough. So here's our upper level trough. This upper level trough won't capture the system. This upper level trough will die. And what will end up happening is that the system will be caught by a ridge and start to track in a westerly direction towards Vanuatu. Then the, then the ridge starts to break down and the system begins tracking a little bit more to the southwest. Now what you can see here is as we go towards day number six and seven, another little upper level trough. So by this little yellow blob, see this little yellow blob moving to the north? That's our up, next up upstream upper level trough expected to impact the southeast parts of Queensland. And then as it tracks into the Coral Sea, what it will do, what one of these trough systems does is it increases the winds moving from the northwest to the southeast in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So even though there's a high here that's circulating the lower level air in an east to west direction, the upper level air is moving in a northwest to southeast direction. And that upper level trough, because the system is quite deep at that point in time, just south of New Caledonia, uh, the upper level trough will become the dominant steering mechanism and the ridge will become the redundant steering mechanism. So the one that just simply won't have much of an effect. So that's the difference here. Well, that's the Europeans take on the situation. Let's take a look at the GFS model. Uh, a couple of key distinctions in this, in the two computer models is the general intensity of this system on the GFS model is only a marginal cat one, uh, maybe to marginal to moderate cat one as it moves in this area. Then the, then the other variation to this system or to this model prognosis is that the GFS does not develop that upper level trough across southeast Queensland anywhere near as sharply as the European does, which is quite a surprise because the GFS model tends to like to develop upper level troughs, even fictitious ones. So uh, the fact that it's not developing it is quite a bit of a surprise compared to what it normally does. So what we can see though is that the system will continue tracking therefore in a westerly direction under the influence of the lower level ridge. And as I mentioned, because of the difference in intensity of the system, a weaker system is governed by what's happening closer down to the surface of the atmosphere. A stronger system will be governed by what's happening much, fur much higher up in the atmosphere in terms of the winds. And the winds currently, or the expected winds, not currently, but the expected forecast winds uh, into the future, so we're talking about day seven or eight here, uh, that the lower level winds will be coming from the east to the west as there will be a high pressure system located in the Tasman Sea. And because of that, the low pressure, the high pressure system in the Tasman Sea will track this low pressure system towards the west. And you can see even into the longer term here, the system will re remain moving in a westerly direction. Another upstream upper level trough comes through in about 12 days time. And this is, we're looking so far ahead, we really shouldn't be. Uh, 
and uh, tries to capture the system, but it's just too weak and it can't do so. And the system will track west and hit the uh, hit the Queensland coast as a very very weak uh, trough, not even a low, more than likely. So, I mean, that's by far the most interesting scenario, I'm sure, if you're a Queenslander. But you can see there the two distinct scenarios. We've got that westerly moving trough or low, uh, as opposed to a much stronger cyclone, which will track to the south and southeast. Now, I'm not going to go into the reasons as to why that low tracking westwards across the Coral Sea isn't expected to become a cyclone. That's more a, a matter for our subscribers, uh, and it's a matter that's going to take uh, take me about 10 to 15 minutes to explain. So uh, I don't have the time here on the public updates to do that, but I hope it does give you a, a look at the two different alternatives for this system, at least based on current computer forecast modelling. So you can see even the Ensemble version of GFS is pretty well on board here where where if the system remains a little bit stronger, it'll push more than likely out here to the southeast. If the system remains a weaker system, then the system continues tracking here to the west or west-southwest all the way through to the Coral Sea. But if you take a really close look here, and I'll just zoom in here, you can just see the pressures here. The, the lowest pressure is 997 hectopascals. So we're not talking about a significant system at all here. We're talking more about a tropical low uh, or more than likely a trough system. And if we continue tracking, even the ones that hit the coast of Queensland, they do so as a 1,005, 1,010 hectopascal low. So really nothing more than just a trough system for those members that push the system all the way west towards Queensland. Given the expected setup at the time, there's going to be a nice big high here around New Zealand. If there's a trough here in the Coral Sea that moves west and whacks into Queensland, uh, then you're probably going to see some enhanced rainfall just to the south of that trough system. So uh, that's probably about as good as we can hope to get it from this particular low. There's no other suspect areas here for any other parts of Australia in the next 7 to 14 days. Over the next four days across Australia, there's good news here for the Kimberley and at least the eastern and central Pilbara regions of the WA. They're going to see an increase in shower and thunderstorm activity and to the point where it's going to be quite widespread out, to, uh, out towards the weekend. So we're going to see widespread shower and thunderstorm activity in this region, which is I'm sure they're going to be very thankful for because they've missed out pretty well on everything uh, with regards to the monsoon and this low that was, uh, was around for the last couple of weeks. So these poor buggers have had not much at all. Uh, so unfortunately though for the West Pilbara conditions still look quite stable. Uh, most of this activity looks to be east of Karratha and just inland of the coast. Across Queensland, all of this rainfall expected to happen the next day or so. Uh, we are looking at a new trough developing on the weekend across the eastern half of Queensland and then tracking towards the west. So more showers and thunderstorms are redeveloping across eastern half of Queensland towards the, uh, towards the weekend. Across the Northern Territory, we're probably going to be seeing uh, shower and storm activity across the northwestern quadrant, the northwestern quarter of the Territory. If you like uh, the northeast and uh, particularly the northeast here, looking at some very hot conditions. Also the northeast coast of Queensland, looking at a continuation of very hot conditions over the next couple of days before things start to moderate as we get towards the weekend. As we look to the 9th to the, 9th to the 12th, we can see this increase in shower and storm activity across the eastern half of Queensland now very obvious as a new ridge pushes up the coast uh, we'll have that ridge interacting with a no, uh, with a much moister air mass uh, from the north the combination of those and a little bit of a, a surface trough in, in through the interior of Queensland are going to create widespread showers and thunderstorms in the four day period from the 9th to the 12th Across the Northern Territory, we're going to see isolated showers and thunderstorms through most of the northern half of the Territory, uh, probably getting more into the scattered territory, uh, scattered amount uh, across the western parts of the Territory. As we go in towards WA here, we can see a continuation of this generalised fairly heavy shower and thunderstorm activity. A lot of tropical moisture being dragged into this trough system across the western, uh, across the interior of WA. So we could be seeing some pretty high accumulated rainfalls. And in fact, over the next week, we could be seeing falls of 50 to 100 millimetres over desert parts of WA. So it's not overly negative. I mean, it could be a lot more negative uh, in terms of rainfall potential given the fact that the MJO is now currently in probably one of the worst spots it can be for 
rainfall for the Australian continent. So that's not not, it's not too bad a map, although in saying that it is well below what we would expect for this time of year throughout almost all of the northern half of Australia. We would expect to see blues and, and dark blues across most of this area and the fact that we're only seeing light greens and greens so we're only looking at sort of 15 to 50 millimetres across much of the region where we would normally would have been expecting to see 100 plus across much of this northern region so even though we're looking at showers and thunderstorms uh, it's certainly not typical for January. Thanks for watching this update, folks. To become an Oz, Oz Cyclone Chaser subscriber, we'll give you heaps more information and you'll get access to our developing weather centre too, which is very exciting stuff for us. Please head to our website at ozcyclonechasers.com.au slash subscribe. I'll have another update for you next Tuesday if a tropical cyclone Ula looks like it's starting to head towards Australia and if it looks like it's going to maintain some intensity. So if we see a major shift in model guidance, then I might update us earlier than next Tuesday. But at this point in time, we don't see that happening, so our next update will be next Tuesday on video. Our next subscriber set of updates is on Friday. Thanks for watching, and have a great week.